Good morning, FlossTube. I'm Misty. Today is Saturday, June 9th. Uh, if you've never been here before, welcome. And if you're coming back, thanks for visiting with me again. I've been looking forward to talking with you today. Um, I'm feeling much better. It took me about a month to get through all that sickness. And I'm feeling pretty good now. And I'm happy about that and just ready to enjoy my summer. So, um, I've been doing a lot of stuff and I'm excited to hang out with you this morning and catch you up on what I've been up to. First, I want to announce the giveaway winners because I know people are waiting for that, so I will do so. And so the winner of the subscriber giveaway was Gina Snyder. Congratulations, Gina. I'll be sending you the... Um, project bag, the away we ride chart, the scissors, needle minder, and thread heaven. So I will comment on your comment and then if you can send me your mailing address, I'll be getting that in the mail to you. Um, the past the stash prairie schooler uh, giveaway winner was Alita Casey. So Alita, congratulations. I'll be contacting you as well. And for the Crabapple Hill embroidery patterns, the winner was Stitching is my happy place. Uh, so congratulations to all three of you, and uh, thanks so much to everyone who um, took the time to leave a comment, and for um, new subscribers, uh, it was just really cool to hear from so many of you. It seemed like people preferred to stitch Christmas, autumn, Halloween in general, um, and samplers, but it was just really cool to kind of see why people liked what they did. And some people, probably everyone in a sense, liked everything. <laughs> I know that it, that was kind of a hard question to answer, even even for me, what's your favorite you know thing to stitch? But it was really interesting just to see what people picked. Um, I wanted to mention a new floss tuber I just watched and she's Carol um, Saltbox Stitcher. And she's done some amazing stitching and I believe she's also a quilter. Uh, I just watched her first video and it was really just impressive seeing the things that she'd stitched. So um, if you haven't checked her out, you might like to stop by and say hello and see what she's been doing. She's got an amazing wall behind her of um, framed stitch pieces that are just beautiful. Uh, what else? Uh, I wanted to say thank you to Jennifer. She's Whistle Stop Stitcher for mentioning me. Uh, that was so nice of you to shout me out. Jennifer is a stitcher and a quilter. She recently bought um, an old house that is um, for quilters and also for stitchers now. She's doing retreats there and the house is beautiful. Um, and she's been trying to add quilts and stitch things to that house. So that looks like just such a cool project. Um, she must be really enjoying that and I noticed that she has quilts as her backdrop now too So that's pretty cool to see different quilts that she's made So thank you Jennifer and if you haven't checked out Jennifer uh, You can check her out and you know whether you like to stitch or you like to quilt or both uh, I think you'd like to see what she's been working on So let's get right into it um, FOs I finished another piece in the Tiny Knit series, this tiny Fair Isle mitten, and I have to say that this was quite some intensive Fair Isle knitting for me at least, um, but it turned out so cute that, you know, I really can't complain, but what I was kind of dreading was the thumb, trying to do Fair Isle on 11 stitches, you know, in the round on the thumb, but I got through it and, you know, it's so cool, it was totally worth doing a million color changes and weaving in one million ends. Um, so I'm really happy with how this came out. And then I need to do one more tiny fair isle mitten. And then I'll be done with the mitten portion of the garland. Um, I gotta be honest, I'm kind of ready for this to be done. I started this a year ago. And uh, I thought I could finish it in six months. And you know, I should double or triple everything. So I should have assumed it would actually take me a year. But I thought I'd be done with this by Christmas. Here we are a year later still making them. Um, I mean, they're awesome. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm ready to be done. So I don't know. I'm going to lay them all out and see how much more do I need to knit to have this look like a good garland. And then I will plan accordingly. Um, but I wanted to share, someone had asked me um, about 
doing a photo, <clears throat> excuse me, of all of the finished sweaters together. So I took a photo and I'll insert it here. So that's all eight of the sweaters. So when I finish the mitten, then that will be all of the mittens. And then I'll do another photo of all the mittens together so that you can see them. And that shouldn't actually take me that long to do the other mitten. I'll probably do, I'm going to do something similar, but change up the color slightly for the other mitten. And it's going to look awesome. And overall, I have enjoyed it. I'm just, you know, sometimes you're just ready to be done with stuff. And I am there. I am ready to be done. Okay. Um, I'd shared with you before that I finished my Halloween quilt, but I didn't have a photo of it finished. So now I have um, a photo of the finished quilt. And um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And basically, when I was putting this together, you know, this was a very relatively simple quilt to piece. As I was putting up on the design wall, I kind of tweaked the layout of some of the blocks so that um, there's kind of a diagonal of a brighter purple star that goes across the quilt and then comes down to give your eye like a path to follow. And then <clears throat> the kind of greenish yellow or almost grello uh, squares in the middle. When I originally laid them out, I kept actually all the same fabrics together and that was like all you saw. And really, even when you look at the quilt now, those really stand out. Um, I ended up making them scrappier so that it toned them down a bit. And then that border with the zigzags also kind of helped draw your eye out a bit more so you weren't only looking in the middle of the quilt. So that was a little bit of a tricky thing to balance the brightness of that yellowish color with the darkness of the um, purples and the blacks. Um, but I just wanted to like kind of explain a little bit about my thought process behind how I did the layout of that quilt. Um, Back when I used to blog more, and well, when, when everyone used to blog more, <laughs> um, there was on, on quilting blogs the idea of um, like taking the process pledge and you could put a badge on your blog. I think this was only for quilting. I don't think any other crafts were really doing this at the time. But people were talking about how you just see this finished quilt and you wouldn't really know like what struggles someone had in making it or what their thought process was behind how they made it or anything. And so the idea at the time was that you'd take this process pledge to share on your blog more about <clears throat> what your process was for creating it. And so I've been thinking more about that lately and how um, I think it's important to know, you know, when people struggle with things, what why people decide to do what they do in, in design uh, layout and things. And so, you know, whenever whenever I can, I'd like to share a little bit about my my thoughts behind why I do what I do just in case that's helpful to someone. I know that it's helpful to me and interesting um, just to know why people decide to lay out a quilt a certain way or why they decide to change a color in cross stitch or, you know, in anything that you do. It's just kind of an interesting thing to know about someone's process um, and probably is helpful in, in guiding us all, you know, we learn from each other. So, so I'm, I'm back to the process pledge. Uh, and I just wanted to share a little bit about that. So, um, Halloween quilt. And I finished another run of towels. I have one left, so I can show you that. So this is a blue and white towel with the cross and check pattern. It's actually a little bit brighter and just a tiny bit greener than what it's showing up here. So that turned out awesome. I was really happy with how this run of towels turned out and I was happy to not run out of uh, warp at the end. Um, that's always a bonus. So I, I did better math this time. And um, I'm going to try, I've done this once before, but I'm going to, um, I had enough yarn left on the loom to cut off and then I'm going to tie on a new warp to each end. So I'm gonna have to like manually knot like around 400 threads but it saves time in the end because um, the rest of the loom's set up, so there shouldn't be any mistakes anywhere that I'll have to fix. Like, I'll just pull the yarn slowly back through the loom, and I'll kind of shake the knots to get them through. And then I can do more of these towels, and I'm going to do, um, instead of a white warp, I'm going to do, like, a navy blue warp, and then put some brighter colors um, in the weft on the towels. So that'll be my next series of towels that I do. So I'm excited. I've only done the tying on or knotting onto a previous warp once, and I'm really kind of excited to change the colors around and just see how that looks. One thing that's kind of interesting about weaving 
that really makes it different, I think, than anything else that I do is <clears throat> if I, you know, plan a knitting project or a cross-stitch project or whatever I'm doing, I can just pull all the colors and see how they look together or a quilt. Now you might have trouble visualizing the exact placement or how much of that color is going to be in a spot, but you kind of know what you're getting overall, usually. But with weaving, I've got blue and I've got white, but then when blue and white mix, you get something else sometimes. So um, that's kind of the challenge and the cool part of weaving is that there's a bit of a surprise to it. Thankfully, um, there is design software that can help you visualize, you know, what you're actually going to get. And I do use that now. Um, that helps me out a lot to see, you know, how, how does this actually look when it's together versus when I've got blue and white together on a cone that doesn't actually tell me how it's going to look woven up. And even the leaf structure I'm using can affect how the colors blend. So that's one thing that's really interesting about weaving and the way that colors interact, which is just really different than, like I said, any of the other fiber arts that I do. And that's why people weave, um, gamps. Oftentimes a gamp can have kind of a rainbow. Um, and then you can change weave structures or change your, um, like you have a rainbow on your warp and then you can change colors on your weft and you'll see how the colors interact together. And then that's kind of like a teaching piece, the way that a sampler would be, but it's, you know, you keep it and then refer back to it, um, to see like what happens when red hits blue here. Um, you know, this particular shade of red and this particular shade of blue. And if I change the weave structure from plain weave, which is over and under to twill, which is like a diagonal, um, you know, how does that change the look of the fabric? So it's just kind of an interesting, weaving is really interesting in that respect. You know, there's a lot of interesting surprises that can happen. Um, so I wanted to say that I've finally opened up my Etsy shop and um, this towel is available in my Etsy shop if you'd like to purchase it. Um, the Etsy shop I will link in below the video. It's Luminous Fiber Arts on Etsy, so you can search for it. Um, you could put the address directly into your search bar and find it. Um, I mean, you could just put the link in. And um, I'll link it here. It's also linked in my profile on Instagram. And... Um, on my like YouTube homepage, my channel page, at the top right corner, there's a link as well to my Etsy shop. So if you'd like to check it out or in the future, um, if you'd like to see what I have posted there, I'll, I'll let you know when there's an update. Um, but I have the towels there and you can choose for your shipping if you want just like first class or if you want priority mail or whatever you'd like. Um, you have options now. So it's really cool. I'm really excited and thank you so much um, to those of you who've already purchased towels from my Etsy shop. I really appreciate it and it's just been really exciting for me. I thought a really long time about doing this before I took the plunge and um, you know it's really intimidating and I just really appreciate all of your support. So thank you. Okay, so what's next? Whips. Okay, I've got three, three whips. I was hoping this would be done by now, but it's not. That is the way of life. So I've been working on American Eagle, as you'll know if you've been watching my videos lately. This is by Blackbird Designs. It is from the book Sweet Land of Liberty. If you don't have this book, really encourage you to get it. It's just awesome. You can see the designs are really great in this book. Um, and this has been such a fun stitch. I'm so enjoying it. So here is my progress. So, I mean, I'm nearing the end on this. I'm going to finish stitching the flower in the pot and then I'll do the bottom border. Looks looks really cool, that, that bottom border. I'm excited to stitch that. And then I'll be done. And you can see I changed the initials here. So it, there was a B and they give you um, all the letters of the alphabet and the numbers because the year goes down here as well. And on a rare occasion where I feel comfortable stitching the year now, like, oh, I'm gonna finish it this year. <laughs> um, so uh, I changed, I just kind of shifted things a little bit so that I could fit both of my initials in. Um, I just did one less stitch 
here. I think that was the only change I made. And then I just kind of, you know, I just graphed it over top of what was on the design. I photocopied it. I love the shaker white and how it has this kind of blue gray effect in here. This was um, really cool. So um, really pleased with this really enjoyable stitch. And I'm pretty sure I know how I want to finish it. So I'm very excited to get it fully finished and put it up on display. So I'm really looking forward to finishing up and sharing that with you. Hopefully by the next video, I'll be all set for that. Sally Spencer. <clears throat> I'm barely making any progress on this, but nonetheless, I'm enjoying it. So I decided like Jan Hicks that I'm just stitching this on Saturdays and um, because I need to prioritize some other things, but I want to keep it moving. So I did. And then I had to rip out. <laughs> I like, I, I had made like one mistake and then another and another and another in my counting. And I was just like, okay, I don't want to have to think this hard later on. So we're just going back. So I had to rip it out. You can kind of see here, but that should come out when I, wash the piece it should look pretty good after that so I think last time I showed you I was somewhere around here so I've made it down to here now um you know it's a beautiful piece and I'm enjoying it so I'm just happy whenever I get to stitch on it which is Saturday so today I'll be stitching on Sally and of course the American flag quilt sampler which is the indefinite piece this is again by Rosewood Manor. Stitch along for that uh, is AFQSAL. If you ever want to join in, like I said, I'll probably be doing this for at least three years, so you can join in anytime you want. Um, okay, so I've made good progress, and I think I showed you up to Georgia last time. I can't remember if Georgia was done. I think it was. So I've stitched this. I started working on um, this red part when I had some extra time. And now I'm on Connecticut down here. So I think with Connecticut, I might change out some of the colors a little bit because my I changed out some of the colors anyway. And um, I'm just feeling like for better contrast, I may switch out some of the colors in Connecticut. But this is awesome really pleased with it still enjoying it I'm gonna lose my momentum on this sadly because I'm traveling and I don't want to take this with me it's just too big so um I'm gonna try and get Connecticut done before I leave and then I won't work on it again until I get back so it'll be hanging out for a while until I can get to it again which I'm kind of sad about but you know it's just not a great piece to travel with this is a really long Scroll rod. I'm not taking my floor stand with me. I don't want to try and do this in my lap. There's a lot of colors. Yeah, so I'm just, it's just not going to go with me on travel. Um, feel free to join in. Then I wanted to mention, so these are my colors, and I picked this box up at Harbor Freight. So it's just kind of a helpful, I know you can get like bobbin boxes, but I was just looking for something else. And this has adjustable, um, slots here so if I needed to change things around I could but then I've, it's much easier to find all of my floss quickly when it's like this so I was pleased to pick this up this was like four dollars there so that's all of my whips I have one new start this is probably this is for sure the most cross stitch projects I've ever had going simultaneously which is kind of funny um but I'm enjoying them all and I, I'm not too stressed. So am I stressed? I don't think so. I think I'm enjoying it. I think it's not stress, but there's the feeling of I want to work on all of it all the time and I can't. So that's not really stress. It's just like, ah, I wish I could spend more time on this. Which I know you all know the feeling of, especially all of you doing who have done mania, probably like times 20 that feeling <laughs> times one for me or well, a few. So anyway, new start. Goat load. As I said, this is going to be for my mom for her birthday in September. Just a little tiny start. 
this is my Sunday's project now. So this is stitched on a 36 count vintage country mocha. And uh, I'm using DMC rather than the mix of Classic Color Works and Weeks. I didn't have most of the colors and I just didn't feel like buying them for this particular project. So this is turning out super cute. Now this fabric, I was surprised, is printed. So the back is just plain and the front is where you get the modeling. And it's fine. I'm, I'm liking it. I really like stitching on 36 count. I thought I was going to be like, I only like one kind of count girl, but I seem to like them all to a certain extent. I definitely prefer using one strand of floss because I think it just looks nicer as far as like the way I stitch. Um, but I'm enjoying all the counts and I have a lot of like 28 and 32 count that I'm thinking maybe I ought to just go over one on those um, to use those fabrics up. So that may be in my future. Uh, the border met up first try. Yay. <laughs> that made me happy. So this is, by the way, just like a really fun, happy little stitch. This might come with me on my trips. I don't know. Since I'm going to see my mother, I have to hide it. So, but I'm going somewhere else first. I might be able to work on it a little bit before I go see her. I don't know. I'm going to try to travel as lightly as possible because anyone who has traveled with me or knows me really well knows that I travel with a lot of stuff. But I get kind of tired of packing it all, hauling it to the car, hauling it out of the car, unpacking it, repacking it. You know, it's a lot of work. And so I'm trying to make my life easier. I'm trying to simplify and not take so much stuff. I just like to be prepared, but I'm trying to let go a little. So I've been working on that. I'm, I'm trying to let go, try not bring so much stuff. So I don't know. I'm trying to think like maybe I could just bring one or two projects on this trip. Just a couple things with as few accessories as possible. We'll see how I do, but yeah, that's my goal. So I'll report back. Um have some haul type stuff. We could call it stash enhancement, curating a collection. There's a lot of nice ways we could say that I've acquired some things. So I've been contemplating trying to do my own fabric dyeing for a while and I've watched some videos and it's kind of a rabbit hole I was afraid to fall down or jump down because uh, you know then you have to buy more stuff, and what if I really liked it? <laughs> Isn't that a weird thing? You don't know if you should do something because you might like it, but that happens to me. Um, like, I might like it too much was my concern. Yes, so anyway, I've been watching some tutorials, and I really just wanted to try it just to see if I liked it and if I could do it. Um, I was concerned that I would maybe, you know, the, the fabric would turn out some terrible shade of, like, brownish purplish gook um luckily that didn't happen but i watched a couple of uh videos by candy stitches and i watched um farm girl michelle's video on uh writ dyeing and i just gave it a try and michelle's video was very helpful in figuring out what to do i mean i read the instructions on the writ website and then i just kind of did what michelle did um so thank you so much, Michelle. Your dyeing tutorial was awesome. So one thing that I did is, you know, we can call this enhancement or haul or I don't know what, experiment, um, is I took a piece of white linen that I had, some 40 count, and I tried dyeing it. I wanted to dye some fabric for this carriage house samplings piece, which I'm not sure if you can tell, but in the picture, it's kind of a white with a little bit of a bluish greenish mottled color. So it calls for 40 count misty rain, me. Um, and I saw on um, Lakeside's site that misty rain is closest to 3753. I looked on Ritz website to see what color combinations I would need to get something close to this. And I didn't really see anything that was quite close to this, so I kind of approximated it. And I used um, pearl gray, aquamarine, and teal. So I did a, um, 
I tried to dye the whole fabric just a little bit gray. And <clears throat> the thing I noticed when I started using the pearl gray is it's a very purple gray, which concerned me because again, I was worried about like a purple brown blob. Um, so I kind of watered that down a bit and I really tried to just very lightly dye it gray, like not leave it in the gray for very long at all, really rinse it out. Um, and honestly, I'm not even sure if I needed to do the gray because I'm not even sure you can tell if there's gray in there, but I did add gray also to the blue, to the aquamarine. And then I tried to model it. So I had bunched it up. I poured that in just a little bit. You know, I used the tablespoonfuls and just kind of, you know, did it carefully rinsed it out. It still looked a little bit light and I thought it needed to be a little bit greener because it was a bit of a grayer blue at that point. And so then I added the teal and did the same thing. I bunched it up and I just put a little bit in and rinsed it out. And I'm so happy. It just came out perfect. Like I couldn't have, like I could have bought this fabric. I just think it's, it's really good. So I'm going to toot my horn, my own horn a little bit and say that I did a good job. Um, and that's a pretty good match. So I'm super pleased with it. I think it's going to be great for this design. So yeah, I, I'm i hooked. I need to buy some more um, white linen so I can dye more stuff and I need to get some more writ. So yes, I've fallen down the rabbit hole. I will soon have a whole collection of writ and undyed or well, white bleached linen. Um, I'm really excited. So that was super fun. I really recommend that you try it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You do get the brown purple blob and you start again. I'm sure at some point I will end up with the brown purple blob fabric and oh well. <laughs> but this time I didn't. So it was awesome. Um, I had some other things that I purchased. I just couldn't help it. I tried not to buy needle minders, but they're just so awesome. Especially these from Mad for Minders. Oh, aren't they pretty? I saw someone else on Instagram, I think had that one, and I didn't even know where to find it. And then when I saw it, I was like, I have to have it. So, so pretty. And I splurged. So I did unload some stash first, or in, in concert with purchasing something that was expensive, but that I just couldn't resist, and which I should have bought when it was around and available to purchase, but whatever. I don't know if I just never looked in the book. Somehow this was not on my radar back before when I was cross-stitching and this was available for a reasonable price. Um, it wasn't a horrible price. I was able to justify it in my mind. Uh, yeah, anyway. So this is Souvenirs of Summer by Blackbird Designs, which is out of print. <clears throat> Should have bought it. And I didn't actually think I needed the book what I wanted it for was that, and I know that this was published in an old issue of Just Cross Stitch Magazine, but you couldn't just get the issue, you'd have to get like a CD, which is fine. But I was like, do I want the whole CD if maybe this is like one of the only things that I want? <clears throat> Sorry, still a little phlegmy. But then I looked at other photos from the book and I was like, well, I just need the book because I think I want to stitch every design in here. So, um, yeah, I'd like to stitch everything. Maybe I can stitch one a year for the next five or six years. So I don't know if I'm making you sad by showing you something that isn't widely available. If I'm making you sad, I'm sorry. You can, you can turn me off now. That's totally awesome. I thought when I first looked at this, I thought this was a submarine, like online. I see now it's a fish, but I thought it was a submarine with an American flag. It's cause, I don't know, whatever. A submarine makes so much sense. I'm not sure that a fish makes a lot more sense, but you know, it's cute. So I'm so excited to have gotten this book. And I really appreciate the seller. I asked if she would put, um, I got it on Etsy. I asked if she'd put some cardboard in because of my mail carrier and she did. So it came very safe and sound with no bends in it. So I'm just super pleased. 
to have this and I'm really looking forward to stitching some things out of it. Then, um, so I order from a shop online called Ye Old Cross Stitchery in um, Bristol, Pennsylvania. It's just over by, right next to New Jersey, right across the river from New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> and I've ordered several things from them and had a good experience. I've always wanted to go to the shop, but it's like a three, almost a three and a half hour drive from where I live. Um, which is kind of long for me. Uh, but I've been wanting to, for years, go to Longwood Gardens in Kennett Square because I've heard it's beautiful. And so I've been waiting to be not sick and to have good weather. And finally, and it needed to be a Thursday. <laughs> so not sick, good weather, and a Thursday. And finally, all three of those things came together this past couple days ago. And we went over to Longwood Gardens. So for the first time, I was able to see it. And it's totally amazing. Just... If you've never been to Longwood Gardens, you need to go, if you can, um, in Kennett Square. It's just amazing. So it's like this huge gardens. There's a conservatory that's amazing. There's a f there's fountains. The fountains do different things. There's a fountain show during the day, several of them. There's a fountain show at night with light. It was amazing. So I've been wanting to go for probably 10 years, and I finally made it to there. Um it's just, like, I'm just thrilled that I went and had such a good time. Um, so uh, I asked my boyfriend if we could also swing over to Yield Cross Stitchery, which is a little over an hour away. Um, and so he was up for that. So we actually went there first, and so I picked up a few things. Um, it was cool to finally go to a shop that I've shopped at online only. I picked up for... Um, the stitch along that'll be happening for Labor Day. I wanted to try and find some linen for this, and I was thinking 40 count. Now, of course, I just successfully dyed fabric, so do I need to buy fabric? Probably not. <clears throat> but just in case, I picked up this picture, this plus pewter, which is kind of a bluish gray. Now, I might like it a little bit greener. So I may actually dye my own and just kind of see if I like my own better. But just in case I got this, in case I end up with the brown purple blob one of these times. And I picked up a little bit of Belsoi. I've never stitched with Belsoi. I wanted to try it. So she had a few of the called for flosses in stock. She does have quite a selection. Mary does at Yield Cross Stitchery. She has quite a selection of different flosses. Um, she has like, on their website it says, and I would believe it, like over 4,000 charts. I'll let that sink in. <laughs> I had about an hour. So I was on a mission. I didn't I didn't browse a lot. I just kind of found the things I needed and, and got out of there. So we we're trying to not hit rush hour Philadelphia traffic to go over to uh, Longwood. So I picked this up. I'd like to get a couple more of the silks. Um, the red and the white, I think. And then I can sub other stuff. So I may be dyeing my own um, fabric for this just to see if I can get a color I, I like a little bit more. And then I picked up um, another piece of fabric for a different project. I won't, I won't show you that right now. And a few charts. So I got the new Prairie Schooler, which is super cute. And um, because I've become kind of obsessed with these uh, Prairie Schooler samplers, I got Autumn. So I think the only one I don't have, well, no, there's a couple I don't have. I'd like to get winter now that I've seen, um, I think it was one of the more recent Addicted Sisters episodes. <clears throat> I think Laura was talking about stitching it on a blue. And I thought winter looked a little bit boring, but I think it could look really cool on a blue or if I change some of the colors. So autumn I was happy with, but I think I've been holding off on the winter and I might get that now. And then... I had to get Christmas traditions. I originally thought maybe I didn't need this. And then I saw online that someone had stitched, I think it was this one, and they'd stitched it as three separate pieces. So this was the middle piece, and then these kind of folded out in a little triptych. And it looked so cool. That was really smart. So I don't know if I'll actually do it that way, but I'm toying with the possibility. You could obviously 
maybe if you could figure out how to cut it off here, you could do something similar here with this one too, which would be really cool. This was only $7, people. $7. She has one more. So I was really happy to go there. Oh, and um, they have a variety of linens and a variety of counts and Ada. So um, if you're ever near Bristol, check out Yield Cross to Tree. You can order online. I had very good experiences shopping online. But if you can get over there, the town is really cute. There's some antique shops and some cafes, and there's a hotel on the Delaware River that had really good food. It's just a cute town. People were friendly. So I really enjoyed it and um, just really enjoyed my trip over that way. Um, I was at a yard sale this morning. I thought this would be really nice for a cross stitch piece. So I'm sure it is a cutting board, but it isn't going to be any longer. So I was happy to pick this up. So yeah, I've just been, well, that trip was awesome. And um, I've been feeling much better, but it's really only been like a few days that I've been kind of normal again. Like I think I made it through the whole day yesterday without coughing once. So that, that was a, a win. Um, yeah, so I've got lots of uh, stitching ideas coming up. Um, I want to do the Christmas in July with Jan. I'm going to try to start... Um, where there are bees pretty soon. I need to finish my American Eagle piece and then I'll start where there are bees. Um, I've got a few other things I, I want to, that are in my mind that I'd like to start. We'll see how my summer goes because I'm always a little bit too ambitious, but uh, I'll, I'll check in with you and let you know. Um, so my next video, I'll be traveling around, so I won't be able to do a video um, in two weeks. It'll either be a few days later or I might just wait until the following Saturday. So it'll either be three weeks or two and a half weeks or something like that. So um, you just, you know, look for me a little bit later and I'll be back with more awesomeness. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for your sweet comments and your encouragement. Um, I really love chatting with you in the comments and I hope that you have a great few weeks and I hope that if you are in summer, you're having a great summer. And if you're starting to have winter, I hope you're having a great winter wherever you are in the world. And I will see you soon. Take care.